One of the most commonly requested videos I've had after making the Belang and Stone Base video was to do a very similar video on the Siler. My goal going into this video is to make a base with a reasonable amount of space, make it no less than three walls thick, as well as incorporate at least one windmill that was enclosed. By having the base three walls thick, not only does it make it harder to raid, but it also helps prevent exploits and glitches that come into the game with each update that allow players to get through the walls of a base. Now before I get into this video, I'd like to make it very clear that because of the 250 pack count with the Siler, the base I've made is simply a demo, and it should be customized to fit whatever needs you have for it. This video will be less focused on a specific design, and more focused on building techniques that can be used with the Siler. To unlock the Siler, you'll need four tablets of any one type. In its base form, it holds 200 water and about 1600 torque. Just like the Belang, the Siler can only have the torque and the water upgraded on it, but it comes with 75,000 health, a 250 block pack count, as well as it can hold 19,200 kilograms. But one of the other cool perks of the Siler is you can have ceramic or iron legs on it. Unlike the Belang, the Siler has no wings and runs exclusively off of torque. Normally this will make it cost quite a bit of torque to move it across the map. Luckily, if you have the patience, there's a neat little trick you can use that will save a whole lot of torque. All you have to do is hold your directional key for no more than 3 seconds at a time. If you continuously do this, you can get almost all the way across the map for very little torque. To get from one corner of a medium tile all the way to the logout zone, I used 11 torque. And if I had been even more careful with it, I would have likely used a lot less. Normally the same distance would cost between 800 and 1000 torque. That said, there is a chance of this being patched out at a later date. Now to be able to build this base, you're going to have to have stone unlocked. But I'm also going to briefly touch on the concrete base, as it can also be packed up on a siler. A concrete base is considerably more expensive to build and to maintain, but it's got a total of 20,000 health per wall, which is 16,500 health more than stone. And that means that one concrete wall is almost double the health of three stacked stone walls. While trying to build this base, one of the most common problems I ran into was having no foundation support. Now sometimes there's things you can do to get around this, but one of the most important things I found while trying to maximize the amount of usable space was to make sure that you do your best to center the base on the center line of each platform. You can see here what I mean by that. Unfortunately, when I started to build this base, I didn't have it as centered as it should be, and that led to me not having foundation support for the final layer of the top of one side of the roof. I've made a quick diagram showing three things. In the center of the red square is a space you cannot build in. The platforms with the green check marks on them show the areas that have the most foundation support. And the last part is the yellow boxes. As you move further away from each platform, you will reduce the chance that you will have foundation support. When you unsnap a roof tile and you try and stack it, you'll notice that it won't allow you to place it. The best way I've found to get around this is to place your unsnapped tile at the very edge of your base tile. From there, you're going to move yourself onto the tile and turn around, and you should be able to place an unsnapped tile in the correct location. Once you have everything in place, you can go ahead and delete the overhanging tile. This will leave you with a snap point to complete the rest of the area at the same level. With the design that I went with, to achieve three roof tiles without running out of foundation support, I did the first and second layer of my floor from on top of the platform, and I placed my final layer from the bottom. When placing the bottom layer, the best method that I've found is to start on one corner and place a roof tile. Cycle it down just enough so that it turns green. From there, you'll have to look for the snap point at the bottom of that tile and angle another roof tile back up so it's flush with the bottom of the building. From there, you can snap the rest of your tiles on and delete the two angled tiles, replacing them with the two new ones that are flush to the bottom. Now please keep in mind, when you're looking to snap a tile in a specific way, it may take a lot of work with the camera to be able to find the right direction and the right angle to get the snap point you're looking for. Next up is the placement of the walls. I would suggest placing one wall on the original floor before you finish layering in the rest of the floor. This will allow you to easily snap the rest of the walls in place at the correct height. When it comes to layering the walls, you can either layer on the inside or the outside depending on what your building allows foundation support for. But I would highly suggest when layering the walls and the roof, 
wait until you at least have a full base structure before completing additional layers. Next I'll cover the door, because that needs to be placed before you fully enclose your base. When trying to layer your base, the doors are one of the most challenging parts because you can't place them very close together. For a base 3 walls thick, you'll start by placing a door on the outer edge of your base. From there, you will create a box that's 2 layers thick, and following that, you will create one more box that only has to be a single layer. When you're finished, it'll look something along the lines of this. Last but not least is the roof. This is one of the easiest sections to make. You will use the same process as you used on the floor, except instead of placing two layers from the top and one from the bottom, you will stack all three layers on top of each other. Before moving on to the windmill, I'd like to show you a different method for stacking boxes. This method is a little more aesthetically pleasing, but it does take a little bit more work and fine tuning to get it just right. To begin, I like to place at least one box on the ground and I use this as a height marker. From there, you'll cycle a roof tile from the next highest snap point down until it's the right height above the box. From there, you'll get on top of that tile and you'll look downwards until you have a snap point coming off the end of that tile. And then you'll rotate that piece up until it's nice and flat at the right height. From there, you can build your shelf out in any direction that you choose. You can also use this same method to create additional layers on top. Before I complete a walkthrough, I'm going to show you how to create a single windmill enclosure with 36 tiles instead of the traditional 40. To achieve this, I've used 4 floor tiles and 7 walls stacked 4 high instead of the traditional 8. Above that, I used 4 more roof tiles to enclose the whole thing. When building this specific windmill enclosure, there's two key things that you need to keep in mind. First thing is you want to place your door tile on one of the corners as well as one additional wall beside it and stack these walls too high. The next part is very important. You're going to want to open the door in the outward direction away from where your windmill is going to be placed. This will allow your windmill placement to be as tight to the door as possible. Once you have your windmill in the correct location, you can start to build the rest of the enclosure. I would highly suggest starting to build from at least the second tile high because that is where the widest point of the windmill begins. Once you have that ring complete, you can continue to place all of the walls to fully enclose the windmill. Another method for building a windmill base on a siler is to build two tiles down off the side and then place your windmill and build back up and around it. This will lower the overall height of your base. Another neat thing you can do with a siler base that's not incorporated in this design is you can make a base that hangs out over the side for collecting hard to reach things like lava. Once your base has been built, you can simply deploy it beside the pool of lava, giving you a reasonably safe place to collect. Now I'd like to do a quick walkthrough of the base that I made during this video. As mentioned before, this is simply just a demo of one of the many different ways you can set up a siler. As I mentioned earlier, this will allow the main section of the base to be three walls thick. Now as much as adding additional layers to your base does make it a bit harder to raid, each stone wall still only has 3500 health. The safest possible base that you can build on a siler will use concrete walls as well as layering. Because as mentioned before, each concrete wall has 20,000 health which requires 20 hellfire arrows to break into that one wall, as opposed to 4 arrows per one stone wall. Additionally, the less layers you use, the more spare tiles you'll have to customize your base. One tip I'd like to add before the end of this video is if you have access to a walker that has the maximum amount of life force modules on it, you will respawn with a total carrying weight of 350 kilograms. This will allow you to hold up to 700 kilograms worth of materials while you're trying to build your base, preventing you from having to go back and forth too many times to resupply. And if you use a desert mule on top of that, you will gain 100 kilograms to your overall weight, allowing you to carry a maximum of 800 kilograms worth of materials. The weight increase caused by the life force modules will last until you die. Now this pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like and subscribe, and if there's anything else you'd like to see a video on, feel free to let me know in the comments. Or if you think there's anything I missed, I'm always up for good feedback.